Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about a technical phone screen. Pretty much standard part of every interview process for any sort of software developer type role, regardless if it's a front end, back end, Android, iOS, like any sort of software engineering really. Somewhere in the process, you're gonna have a technical phone interview. So we're gonna talk about what type of questions you might get and how to answer them more importantly, right? Because there's a ton of stuff out there you know, in terms of your software niche. And we can't cover every individual question, but we can definitely give you some pointers on how you can prep, as well as how you should be answering the question. I wanna thank our sponsor for the video, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are interested in learning iOS, uh, QA, full stack web, uh, UI, UX, Salesforce, they have a bunch of after hours, full time, online courses. Um, you, should, you can check them out at devmountain.com. On a side note, uh, look forward to a couple weeks from now. I'll be on the Dev Mountain podcast talking about some some stuff, I guess. That's what you do on podcasts, right? So check them out, devmountain.com. Hey, guys. I just actually added a new section to my 100 algorithm challenge. If you're interested in checking it out, it's a technical phone screen where I've added 10 videos. And I think I'm going to add about five more. I just haven't had the time quite yet to do it. It's, uh, it's been a pretty well-received course. Uh, uh, not only do you get the 100 algorithms and kind of an introduction to TypeScript as well, but we're also going to get you going with those technical phone screen questions. You can get it for just $10 with the link in the description down below. Thanks. So let's talk a little bit about how you might prep for a technical interview. Um, the sort of odd way of doing it and the sort of way that happens is you interview quite a bit. Um, I, am, I interview pretty much all the time whether i'm looking or not you know you have recruiters reach out to you all, all to see and i find it good practice for one you never know when you know an exciting opportunity may come along but you, it gives you an idea of what you know for your niche is important for these technical phone screens so uh the benefit of that is if you bomb half the questions you now have a half the question pool to say okay you know what i'm not familiar with this concept but it's clearly important enough that it's being asked in the technical phone screen. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna review. So you, it's a good, good, good aspect of doing that. It, you get exposed to, it's like almost like in college if they give you the pretest, right? Or in, and they're like, oh, well, I failed this 50%. Let me go and review. Um, now you have to know which ones you failed and you know, you should be honest with yourself if, oh, well, I answered it, but I don't think it was kind of right. So just, take you know take mental notes during your conversation see how to improve one thing i, I really want to stress is don't lie either um you know some of us get nervous i i've talked about how uh, i throw up before technical interviews sometimes and uh in college i would throw up and after during tests right so i i understand getting nervous really well um you know and sometimes those silly concepts would go blank in your mind and you get you know another great reason to practice so that you get more comfortable with that but during your, your technical phone screens, you know, you may have the, and I've seen it happen quite a bit when I've interviewed candidates and they have said, they've said answers that were just false, but they said it confidently like they knew it was true. If you don't know something, feel free to say, you know what? I don't know. Uh, and you can elaborate on that as well. So like, for instance, I don't really work in React too much. So I don't know everything about React. So when I get asked React questions, I'll say, you know, I don't work in React too much, but knowing what I know about JavaScript and frameworks, this is what my gut would tell me would be the answer, would be the solution. And it's okay to say that, you know, say, you know, I got asked about JavaScript prototypes versus classes and, and I don't know prototypes in and out, but my understanding is that classes are just sort of a, a sugar syntax on prototypes. And so I answer what I do know about it and I make it clear that this is sort of a, you know, I'm not saying this with certainty, but this is what my gut would tell me based off what I know about the language and the example. And the other thing is to answer fully, right? Give examples in your answers. You know, if they're asking you about a certain thing, give it situation in which how you might use this concept and why it's relevant. And on that note, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to I'm going to play a video now uh, from my um, 100 algorithm challenge course. I just added a new section to it, going over 10 JavaScript questions or so, 
and uh, to prepare you for the technical phone screen. So not only do we have the 100 algorithms to prepare you for the technical interview or your technical coding interview, we're now working on, and I'm gonna expand on it, uh, about 10, 10 questions that are pretty common and so we're gonna give you a question and answer as well as a little bit of a, a solution to get so to sort of paint the picture of how I would answer a question in an actual technical phone screen. So a very common question, one of the most common is, what is a lexical versus block scope? And another way that they may be at, you may be asked this is they'll ask you, what is the difference between constant let and var? This is all sort of the same question. So let's let's take um, let's take it from the const list let and var because it's going to answer the same way. Uh, but do know that most that's fifty percent of the time it's going to be phrased as what is lexical lexical scope versus block scope. So um, what is const let and var? Uh, well, const let and var are ways to store variables. Um, var is the traditional way which has sort of been deprecated with the addition of constant let and that uses lexical scope. Lexical scope is really refers to variable hoisting where we're talking about your variables even though they're defined let's say in a falsy if statement where they shouldn't exist so you're still going to get a undefined value for them instead of an error thrown because those variables are going to be hoisted to the top of their function scope. And you know there, there's some issues with this. Um, a very basic example of, of it would be with a for loop, for instance, where you might expect your let I, or var i is equal to zero to like the length of an array. It's actually going to have that that plus one value that breaks that for loop iteration if we for some reason wanted to use that variable after the fact because it still exists in that function scope. And that's not something that we typically want to happen. Now, um, let and const, const refers to storing uh, data that's gonna be a constant when it's a primitive type, uh, meaning it's going to be a, a Boolean, a, a string, a number, and it's not going to be modified. However, when it comes to arrays and objects, const has a has uh, the ability to, you're not gonna be able to swap in a new array, but what we can do is modify that array and object. So it's not constant in how some people may think. And then let is essentially var 2.0, but that uses, that's where we're gonna be resetting our values where uh, constant let use block scope, uh, block scope, which means that our variables exist only in which the scope that they are defined and there is no variable hoisting associated with them out up to the top of the function scope. All right guys, I hope you found that helpful. Um, it's kind of getting you an idea of you know, how to answer a question. Sometimes I feel like people really are trying to rush through because they're nervous. While it's better to just sort of take a minute and give a clear answer uh, as well as to give examples to really uh, hone down the fact that you know what you're talking about, right? And, um, you know, if you don't, it's okay. Practice, learn. Uh, don't lie, as I mentioned. Uh, that's probably the worst. Um, it's worse to be misinformed than to not know. You know, it's kind of like bad habits versus no habits. So with that being said, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification bell. Check out the 100 Algorithm Challenge course, which just got 10 new videos added to it and probably a few more moving forward, which you can get for just $9.99 in the description below. I appreciate y'all. See you guys next time. Bye. All right, so Mateus here says, are there any developers who work by their startup, mid-sized company, or large organization? Do you guys use Bootstrap, Flexbox, Grid, or a combination? What's my, widely used in the industry? So uh, I will say that a lot of organizations will use Bootstrap, uh, depending on it. Some people do it custom. I happen to be, be using Grid lately, um, you know, and Flexbox and Grid you can use together. You can use all these together. So keep that in mind is a lot of times people want to have this one or other approach when it comes to software. Well, the reality of the situation is you should typically choose what works best for the best scenario. And if, it, if it's Grid, great. If it's Flexbox, great. If it's custom media queries with floats, I'd be confused, but great. <laughs> uh, so just remember that, you know, there, there's no sort of universal rule. The universal rule is use what works best for you.
Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you subscribed and hit that notification bell. Check out my latest course, the 100 Algorithms Challenge, where we go through 100 different algorithms in JavaScript and TypeScript so that you can ace your next JavaScript coding interview. You can get it in the description for just $9.99. Check it out. See you next time. Thanks for watching.